Welcome back to TBRD on what is a beautiful Thursday morning. Instead of heading north, I am heading south. I have got the day off because I am going down to Bob's BMW in Jessup, Maryland. There's a recall on this 2020 S1000XR, so I'm going down to have that recall serviced. And I have another issue that I'm going to talk a little bit about on my trip down to the dealership today. About a month ago, I had hopped on my phone to see a suggested article from Google talking about a recall from BMW impacting a number of motorcycles, including my, my new bike. And it has something to do with a faulty front brake caliper that when parked can potentially leak brake fluid and the real issue that arises from that outside of the most obvious of having brake fluid leaking out of your caliper is that without enough fluid left over in the reservoir you're going to lose all your front brake which as you know supplies the majority of your stopping power so i haven't noticed any leaking uh, from my caliper but nonetheless it is a mandatory recall and I certainly don't want to play around with an issue with the brakes my understanding is that they also pulled all new units uh, to be inspected and possibly have the parts replaced so we're gonna find out what that's all about today when we get down to Bob's BMW I talked about in uh, an earlier video which you can see linked up above that Bob's is just a fantastic dealership. I've been down there one time for service on a Saturday first come first serve and talk about knocking it out of the park. I was in and out of there. There was 24 of us lined up that morning when I, uh, by the time it opened. They've just got a great system. I mean, they're fantastic. The owner is just amazing. I had mentioned in that video during Saturday service. And heck, the guy comes in, comes out, takes coffee orders, delivers coffee to everybody, goes back in, comes back out with many dozens of donuts to hand to out to his customers. They're, uh, they're first class all the way. So, I'm actually, it's uh, funny to say, kind of uh, surprised, kind of excited to go down for this service. This is my first scheduled service at the dealership. So we're gonna go down and see how that goes. Plus, what a better way, what better way is there to spend a day when you're not at work and down around uh, some great bikes at the motorcycle dealership. So I'm looking forward to, to that. And as luck would have it, I was blessed with what is supposed to be sunny and 75 degree day. So I had mentioned earlier another issue that I was having with this bike that I wanted to have looked at today. And that is this. When I bought the bike, I noticed as I rode, from time to time it would stall. And the pattern was, it would stall any time, well not every time, but when it would stall, it would be when I was slowing down to a stop, usually in third and second gear when you would engage the clutch. So if you would pull the clutch in as you were downshifting, or if you uh, just wanted to coast up to a stop, maybe on a residential 25 mile an hour zone, just pull that clutch in, the engine would just shut off. Uh, and it happened frequently. Uh, not every time, but frequently enough to be quite a nuisance. Obviously it wasn't something that should be happening. And I would potentially say, uh, a bit of a safety hazard, especially if you're thinking about if it happens to you in an intersection, which it had happened to me before. Um, once I knew what was going on, I could prevent it from happening by only barely engaging the clutch uh, and really slowly pulling it through the friction zone when I was at that low speed. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We're going to cut away to about a minute and 30 second montage of the bike stalling in said situations. In three, two, one.
All right, so now that you've seen what I'm talking about, I'll give you a little bit of more information. And then go ahead and drop me a comment down below as to what you think it is and what you think is going on. And what I will do in the follow-up, my next video that I post, is I'll let you know what the dealership has to say today as far as that issue goes. Oop, we got a 5-0 sitting up there. So before I do that, let me give you just a little bit more information. So as I said, it this this issue started pretty much uh, I noticed it probably the second or third time I was riding the bike and mm, I had a few suspicions it doesn't really it, it does not idle funny when I started up uh, I thought you know initially maybe there's an idling issue or a fuel mapping issue and that is kind of still where my belief is is that it's an idling fuel mapping uh, sort of issue but I'll tell you this I set the appointment up uh, about a month and a half ago because I was curious as I ran the bike in and I'm up to just under 3,000 miles right now so I'm putting on about a thousand miles a month I was curious as to if the issue would resolve itself as I ran the bike more and I have to report back not as a spoiler but I guess a spoiler the issue has more or less resolved itself. I haven't had the bike stall in that situation probably in the last month. And I'm thinking now that it's fully broken in that that's resolved the issue. I'm not a mechanic. I can't necessarily explain that fully. But what I do know is I've had another bike that did something similar until I got it about 1,500 to 2,000 miles on it. And I talked to my brother who had a similar incident or incidents on one of his motorcycles as well. So I'm curious to see what the dealership has to say. I'm going to share with them that footage so they can take a look at it uh, and let them know kind of where things stand. My guess is we're not going to do anything because uh, you know, the bike's not, not stalling anymore. So that kind of takes care of that. I was never really too concerned about it. I didn't think it was probably altogether that serious. And, you know, it's under warranty for six years. So if it's a problem, they'll fix it. Worst case scenario, I get a beautiful loaner bike and ride around on that so it would be resolved. So, no harm, no foul. All right, we're gonna put some miles on the bike to get down here. We'll tune in just, uh, just north of the Fort McHenry Tunnel heading into Baltimore. All right. We are a bit further down the road, as you can see to my right. We are heading pretty much into Baltimore. You can see the, get a look here. There's the Natty Bow sign down there towards the inner harbor. Getting ready to head through the tunnels. Juvenile side of me still gets excited when I roll up to tunnels. So you'll have to forgive me. I like to slow down and speed up and listen to the, anything that I'm riding or driving as I go through tunnels. Guess I'm still just a little kid at heart. Make our way through the toll here. Forgive the wind noise. We're gonna crack this visor.
out the other side. All right, we're gonna catch you as we get down to the bike dealership next. Got a few miles to put on between here and there. All right, here we are, Bob's BMW. I don't think they open till nine, but motorcycles. That's us. All right, our service is done. We are getting ready to leave Bob's BMW, as I said, here in Jessup, Maryland. I didn't point out on the way down here, what you probably notice if you take a look back here, there was a bird that <laughs> crapped on my mirror commuting to work all week, and my windshield was absolutely deplorable, uh, just in terms of how dirty it was. But not only did they do a wonderful service on the bike, in terms of the recall work that was done, the front brake caliper, as I said, I found out when I got down here, there was also uh, a corrosion issue with a bolt on the ABS that they had to replace that was part of the recall. Everything else looked great. Um, I also noticed my chain was excessively slack when I got down here. And I don't have currently, but I'm gonna get it, uh, the right size socket for the adjuster in the back. It's 35 for anyone who's interested. Uh, and I'm gonna do a video on that in the future when I gotta adjust the chain. When I got down here, I noticed um, since the last time I had cleaned and lubed the chain, which I do pretty regularly, it was excessively slack. And I don't abuse this bike. You know, uh, I will admit, power wheelie, occasionally, yes. Uh, can't imagine what I'm doing on it should have made it that slack since the run-in service, but we're going to have to keep an eye on that. So I'll provide updates on that, and next time I'll get the right socket so I can do the adjustment at home, and I'll point that out to everybody. But this place, five stars always. Everything looks awesome. They even clean the bike up for you before they give it back to you. So super excited to report back on that. We're going to hit the road and get up on out of here. Here we go. All right, some nice bikes sitting outside. Good stuff, good stuff. Always enjoy coming down to Bob's. I've said in the past, if you're in the area or you're in the market, it's a great place to get a bike from, for sure. All right, we are on the road. Let's get this visor down. I feel like I forgot something. I don't know what that would be. Let's hope we don't get home and find out I did forget something. That would be terrible. At any rate, that's going to do it for today's video and the updates on this 2020 BMW S1000XR. Got the uh, recall service done on the front brake caliper and the bolt. It's the ABS. Uh, it was explained to me, but really uh, nothing too big. It'll be on the warrant or warranty on the recall list if you're interested in that. But it's all performed. The one thing I will say is, I didn't need to have my caliper replaced, which was good because they didn't have it in stock, which would have been a headache. Uh, in that I would have had to come back, obviously, to get that once they had that uh, part shipped out. But thankfully, that wasn't an issue for me. All right. Until next time, as I like to say, keep the throttle back, the rubber down, and enjoy the ride.